Hello YouTube, this is going to be a video series on the Linux kernel and we're going to talk about what the Linux kernel is and we eventually will get into Linux kernel programming. Um, the Linux kernel is really a way to have a centralized interface between the user and the machine. So basically it allows the user to talk to the hardware of the computer uh, in a more direct and efficient way as opposed to the user having to know assembly language to manage all the many complexities of talking to specific hardwares attached to your machine. Um, a graphical organization of the kernel is as follows. Um, essentially you have your hardware which is your machine and it can have a number of uh, devices attached to the uh, computer like maybe you have a microcontroller or you have a wire attached to a peripheral device like a keyboard all those hardware components are um, managed by the kernel and in turn you have shell programs or user applications that make reference that talk to the kernel and make requests um, to utilize either the, mon the monitor, um, save information to the hard drive, or get input from the keyboard. So um, the relationship between the kernel and the user is uh, like this, uh, basically. So you have the user space or the shell application making requests from the kernel, like print a message to the screen or get information from the keyboard it makes those requests to the kernel and in turn the kernel goes ahead and satisfy those requests by talking to the hardware inside the kernel there are process schedulers memory managers and input and output schedulers process schedulers allow the kernel to give equal equal time to different processes. Uh, processes are uh, programs that are actively running in memory. And memory managers allow for a way to manage, share, and allocate memory sp uh, space for different applications so they can all share um, and play nice with each other. I input and output um, schedulers allow for use of the keyboard um, and other uh, writing operations. Also the kernel is composed of IPCs and IPCs are inter-process communications and this comes into play specifically uh, with uh, multi-threading allowing for um, SEM4s uh, and if you don't understand some of, the, some of these concepts um, it's alright um, in due time you will um, it's also for locking, uh, so like, so if you have, um, s multiple threads running, you can have synchronization between them. And then also the kernel is composed of, um, it has ability to interface with network services. So your NIC cards can work and so you can have internet access. Um, also, there's um, the file system. The kernel, um, Linux kernel, the Linux system has a number of different types of uh, file formats that it can support, and all of them all have different variations. But all in all, the Linux kernel has also a virtual file system, and the virtual file system allows the um, kernel to be able to talk to different types of uh, supported file systems inside of Linux and talk to them in a uniform manner. Uh, so the virtual file system inside of the Linux kernel allows for a level of abstraction so it doesn't have to deal with this uh, number of uh, many individualized complexities that result from having so many different types of uh, supported file systems inside of Linux. So the virtual file system is very important and then also this file this file system talks to the device driver and the device driver in turn talks to the hardware 
And so this overall is the components of the kernel. Um, earlier I talked that um, the, the user space and the shell um, programs talk to the kernel by making requests. Um, but I should mention now that the kernel runs in a very privileged um, environment in that it can access any aspect of the computer at any time and access the full range of memory and talk to hard, all the hardwares attached to your computer. Whereas in the user space, it doesn't, it has very limited access to a number of resources, including memory and including hardware uh, devices like the monitor, keyboard. So all of its requests have to be made uh, via the kernel. And of course, from this privilege uh, mode, the kernel talks to the hardware and satisfies the request of the user or shell applications. But what you can do, what you cannot do is from the user space directly talk to the hardware. That is a no-no. Um, a way to get around that, like I explained earlier, is for the user to talk to the kernel by making a request. And those requests are called system calls. And in turn, the kernel makes uh, its form of a call to hardware uh, via interrupts. So the hardware interrupts, the kernel tells it it has data for it. Or the, the kernel talks to the hardware, um, writing information to the hardware. All right, to get, um, to get a recent copy uh, or the latest copy of the Linux kernel source, uh, you can go to kernel.org and you can get a copy. I have misspelled that. But um, on your system, if you want to find out your current running version of the kernel, you can type uname uh, with the flag R for release version. And that will give you your current um, Linux kernel um, version. Um, there's a special numbering uh, syntax they use. And the first number is called the major number. And the second number is called your minor number. And the minor number, if it's even, that means it's stable. Versus if it's odd, it means it's, a, it's more experimental. It's in a developmental stage. And the last number is the revision uh, number. After you get a after you get a copy of the cur uh, current source, the current kernel source, you can unzip it inside of your uh, user uh, um, USR directly under source. Well, that's going to do for this tutorial. Join me next time, and it will go more into detail about the Linux kernel. As always, please subscribe. Um, depending on the feedback, depends on how much more of this series I will produce. Thank you.